Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm John Luke, the reselling white boy. If you're new around here, I'm a part-time reseller on eBay. So I buy stuff for a low price, sell it for a high price, hopefully making a profit. I'm currently in the shed, which has been the project for the last few weeks. We've been turning it into an office and a stock room. When it's all finished, we've got the ceiling, lights to put in, some more electrical stuff. But yeah, when it's all finished, I'm going to get a really nice tour and a before and after kind of video coming out. So yeah, stay tuned for that one. But today, it's the new series on my channel. We're going to call it Booty Picks. Uh, I know it's a little bit of a pun to it. But yeah, it's going to be the car boot hunting videos. Uh, so in future, it will be filming on the boot sales. It'll be live streaming on the boot sales. All kinds of stuff like that. Today it's going to be strictly a haul video because I've not actually got the GoPro to get to the boot sales yet. But yeah, it's going to be haul from Saturday and Sunday's boot sale this weekend. It's now Sunday night. Uh, I've just gone live with Joe, Kieran and James. That went really well. We've got a dog in the background. That is fantastic. Oh, uh, lovely. Thank you. You done? All right. So yeah, I went to Norcross Car Boot on Saturday and Leeds Bradford Airport Car Boot on Sunday. So yeah, I'm going to talk you through what I picked up from one, then the other. Then we're going to total up what we spent and then total up what we expect to get in return. If you enjoy the video, hit like, hit subscribe. And yeah, we're going to get more content rolling out very soon. More days in the life. We have got lots of stock to list. So we're going to work through that in some day in the life videos very soon. And yeah, these Booty Picks videos will be out every week. So the first boot sale that we went to was Fleetwood slash Blackpool area. It was Norcross car boot sale. About a 50 minute drive for me uh, as there's none local to me on at the minute. I need to get out of the house. I need to go and do something. Why not go to a boot sale? The boot sale was great. It was really well run. We queued up right up until 8 o'clock in the morning. And then we was let in. The only problem we have with this car boot was all the sellers were buying off each other before the buyers got in. So all the best stuff was either up the price on another stall or it was completely off the market there was no gaming stuff at all so one of the traders definitely picked up everything like that but yeah it is what it is we spent what did we spend we spent 23 pound in total which isn't fantastic it was only a small one couple of rows at most but yeah we expect to return 228 pound off that 23 pound investment that's before fees and everything like that so the first pickup we got as soon as we got on the car boot were these nike acg suede boot trainers like high tops very nice just a little mark on the side there they actually do look worse on the camera but i should be able to clean them up nicely they cost me three pounds in a size eight and a half lots of tread on the bottom just a little bit gone on the heel side but yeah should be aiming for over 30 pound on these there's one selling for more than this i uh, just got to find the right model uh in general but for the list's sake i've put them down as a 30 pound projected sale so yeah, super stuff. Uh, pretty rare, to be honest. You don't see these all the time. They're not like your standard Air Force or something like that. So yeah, really cool to pick these up. The only pair of trainers I picked up today. But yeah, a nice pair at that. So the second item I picked up from Norcross Car Boot today was this, uh, yesterday, should I say, was this Laser FX set. And it's an American set. There you go. It is the perfect gift for anyone who loves music. But yeah, it's from 1988. It is a vintage thing. It's like a laser type thing. So you plug in your hi-fi system. You can see the, the old style hi-fi there. Plug in your hi-fi and then it goes with the music, projects all the lasers all around the room and kind of creates a little uh, environment for you. A cool, a cool mood-like kind of thing. But yeah, uh, I've seen a few of these sell between 20 and 30 pounds uh, in worse condition than this. They're literally, I'm not going to open it because it's quite a, a nuisance to get in and out. But yeah, it's all bagged up in really nice condition. Uh, it's got like all the cables and stuff pretty much wrapped in the plastic. Uh, it's from 1988. It was produced in California and it was made in Korea. So it was like created in California, produced in Korea. But... I'm going to aim for about £40 on this. It is very niche and there's none on eBay at the minute. But yeah, Laser FX. There's no brand. Like Laser FX must be the brand because it just has the patent or the patent, uh, the US patent. But yeah, awesome stuff. Paid £3 for it again, uh, literally about a minute after those trainers. So yeah, cool stuff. After that, we had one store which had a load of cameras and a DAB radio, like alarm. So what I'll do, I'll start with the alarm clock. It was a Texet pink alarm clock, vintage one. Got the little snooze button on the top. Needs a clean up, but it is really cool. Um, I've not found any alarm clocks made by this brand. 
It looks like a bit of a rare one. I put it down as a £20 projected sale, but I am going to aim higher with it because it's in a quite unique pink colour. I uh, tested it. It is working nicely. But yeah, it's really cool looking vintage 80s alarm clock. £3 for that one. And then we got tons of cameras off him. Um, obviously, on the eye, I don't know all the cameras. I saw one where I knew, right, that's money. Uh, but he wanted to sell them as a bundle. It was like £2.53 it worked out each. So I'll talk you through the best one first. Get that one out of the way. Here it is. This is the best one out of the bunch. Let's put that in the light. So it's a Fujika DL100. It's got his cap on the front, the lens cap. But yeah, really nice camera. Got a lovely green on it. But yeah, this sells between 35 and 60 pound. Uh, I've not seen any with the cap on top, so I'm going to aim top end. I'm going to go for about 50 pounds on this. Really nice condition. Uh, it's just got that little sticker removed there. I'll try and clean that a little bit up. But yeah, apart from that, it's really nice. I'll just pop the battery compartment open. Uh, so, looks lovely. So yeah, really pleased with that one. The next four cameras range from about £12 to £20 each. Uh, some have got cases and stuff, so that bumps up the value a little bit. But bear in mind, they're about two fifty pounds each in investment. That Fujikas already put us well into profit with the bundle, about £35 profit. But yeah, we'll uh, talk you through. I'll just fly through these four because they're not nothing special. Uh, £12 to £20, like I said. So, first one, we've got the Canon. About a £15 camera. It's got a lovely little Canon case with it. It is the Sure Shot 105mm, no, 105 Zoom S. So, yeah, really cool, basic style, but yeah, really nice condition again. Uh, that should be an easy £15 on that one. I'll be aim higher with everything come down anyway, because we're not in a rush to sell. Next one after this is a, what was it, Olympus Zoom AF. Very sleek again, but yeah. Quite a low-end one. What have we got on that one? About £18 on that one I've got written down there. That's about the average price for that. But yeah, cool stuff. Lovely. As I said, the main one was the one at the start. But we'll sort through the last two. We've got a Kyle Sierra, which is about £12 to £15 again. So there is a couple of cameras made by that company, Kyle Sierra, which are worth a good bit of money. But it is a shame that they aren't. This one isn't, sorry. Um, but yeah, 12 to £15 again. Nice sleek colour. Um, obviously, nice clean batch compartment, etc, etc. But yeah, really happy. Last but not least, it is a lovely little digital camera, which would have cost a bomb back in the day. Whoop. And it's probably the cheapest one. I think it's got 12 to £13 on this one. It's got a, a case with it as well. But yeah. Oh, it's not actually digital, is it? If it's not got uh, the screen on it, is it a digital camera? I'm not sure. It's a tiny one anyway. Still a film camera. I don't even know it. It must be digital. A digital camera without the screen. Sorry. I'm being a I'm being a fool. But yeah. So that is the Ixus 2 on that one. But yeah. Off that investment, uh what was it, about about fifteen pound for the cameras and the radio. Something like that, fifteen, sixteen pound. What sixty pound off that one camera, say ten to twelve to fifteen for those, that's hundred quid and then the, the radio, hundred and twenty. Happy days. Obviously, it was slim pickings at this car boot, so I really had to go off a whim with some stuff. Uh, but the last thing I picked up at this car boot, is it the last thing? Uh, yes, it is. The last thing I picked up at this car boot was another basic pickup, really. But it was these Joytech Dancing Mats. And this is compatible with PS1, PlayStation, and PlayStation 2. I'm not sure why it says PlayStation and PS1. And PlayStation 2. Didn't know there was just a PlayStation. But they're brand new and sealed on the inside. Oh, and they're selling for about £12 pre-owned. So I'll just put them up for £15 each. Uh, I got two of these, £15 each. Uh, they won't be fast sellers, but for a pound each, um, what, £30 off £2 investment? It's a no-brainer. If you saw that in, in um, BNM, you'd be on it, wouldn't you? So yeah, pretty basic car boot sale. Uh, it, it weren't fantastic, but then again, a lot of the stuff would have got snagged before the buyers even got in there. Would I go there again? Probably not. Probably not. But seeing as it's locked down still, I might still go because it's there's no Saturday ones closer than that. Um, I think there's one more Liverpool ways that I could go, so I might give that a try. 
Moving on to Sunday's car boot, which was Leeds Bradford Airport car boot. Compared to the Norcross car boot, much larger scale. But then the social distancing was not adhered to at all. There was no one-way system. There was It was all over the place. It was just like a normal day. Whereas the Norcross was pretty spread out, nicely done uh, in terms of the social distancing and the guidelines. So yeah, in that regard, uh, it is worse than Norcross. Also on the Facebook, it did say that it was 7am when the buyers were allowed to get in. I turned up at 7 thinking, yep, yeah, I'll jump in the queue and off we go. But no, the buyers were in before 6am. So yeah, everything was picked through yet again. Still managed to spend £47 and I'm planning to return £200 off that investment. But yeah, it's just a bit of a night, a bit annoying. Um that you travel what 50 minutes to get there. I'm from Manchester, so quite a way to get there. And then once you get there, it just seems like it's been picked through. There's people on one side of the car boot, there's people on the other side of the car boot, there's people in the middle. I caught one car uh, unboxing the boot, unpackaging the boot, and it was rubbish. But at the end of the day, um that's what it's like. I guess my local when I turn up at quarter to six. Probably advertises the same half six or seven. So yeah, I'm one of those guys in that regard. Next week, I'm going to go again, but I'm going to be there at six o'clock and I'm sure I'll get a lot of better stuff. But yeah, we're going to talk through what we've got. We've got one, two, three, four different pickups, totaling £47. Let's go. So the first thing I picked up was this Mongoose bike helmet, like skate helmet. But I used to have a bike, which was Mongoose. So I'm guessing it's a proper biker brand. Still got the stickers on the inside. It's probably been worn once or twice. Nice design. I think it's a medium size kids. Yeah, 52 to 57 centimetres. So it would not fit my massive head. I think that's the wrong way around also. But Nah, it's not getting round. Ugh, nearly. But paid £2. Hoping to get about 20 for that. So yeah, nice easy flip. George Ross picks up a lot of skate stuff and helmets, bike helmets, motorbike helmets, and they're really good sellers, good brands. Uh, you just got to pick up stuff and you'll you'll learn on the job kind of thing. But yeah, you always got your eBay to search on. Mongoose, good brand to look out for. Not sure if they do adult stuff also, but definitely for the junior stuff. Um, don't pass it up if it's one or two pound. So after that pickup, we found this dude. It is the monkey. The PG Tips Monkey, but no, it's not the PG Tips Monkey, it's the old one from the ITV, ITV Digital. It's got the Sidekick t-shirt on. You find these, they're worth about 20 to £40, pound, depending if you've got the tags on. It's new in the bag, about £50, pound. but this one was £1 pound on the car boot. He has a little bit of damage on his leg there, a little bit coming away, but someone who wants it will take him and he will, they will fix him up. Uh, that's really collectible. Uh, the big ones. I think they did an NTL one and then an ITV one. So yeah, look out for the big ones. Even with no t-shirt, uh, you'll be able to get £20 for. Uh, I've seen them go for that anyway. Sometimes you go on bids for £5, £10. But buy it now, £20 or more all day long. I'll probably aim for £20 to £25 on this, obviously with the damage. If there was no damage and it was in pretty neat condition, I'd be aiming for over 30 with this. But yeah, from a £1 pickup, happy days. Really like the character as well. Awesome stuff. So I think back in the day, uh, Ben, Fitzpatrick, uh, Nick, Anza here were all selling little monkeys in PG Tips mugs. And it does it's like a major throwback to that. I've still got loads of PG Tips monkeys left from that kind of craze back in the day. I'm not sure if they're even selling anymore. I might have to have a look at that because I've got tons. But yeah, cool one. And we'll move on to the next. After that pickup, we picked up Shrek. And it's a McFarlane toy, this one. Uh, let me just find the McFarlane branding. McFarlane toys right there. Don't think it's going to focus because the light's out of the way. But yeah, really sought after this one. I've seen one, when I searched it, one out of the box without the Shrek. Sold for $24.99, I think. Um, don't quote me on that. But yeah, in the box, a little bit of damage to the box. But I'm going to be aiming for over 30 on this, 34 99 I think there's one up at the minute at 39 99 So yeah, it's got a little bit of sun damage, a little bit of wash there. So we'll probably taken off uh, for about 30 after listing it for 35 but I paid £4 for this one. Awesome stuff. Not sure on the year on this. I'm guessing it's the year Shrek released. So yeah, the year is 2001. So yeah, 19-year-old McFarlane toy. It's fantastic. Uh, it is his outhouse on the uh, outside of his little house. So it's got the little toilet, the toilet roll, Shrek. It's really cool. But yeah, an unboxed one sold for about 25 So yeah, should be able to get 30 35 for this for sure. 
So yeah, do look out for your McFarlane toys. I do collect quite a few bits uh, that McFarlane toys make. Really good company. So yeah, if you see anything with that McFarlane toys branding on, definitely give it a search. Last but not least, I picked up five of these Champions League final balls. Uh, for any of you football fans, it is the 2018 Kiev final from when Liverpool lost. It was a happy day for most English citizens, apart from the Liverpool fans in the chat. You know who you are. But yeah, picked up five of these for £40. They were selling for £10 each, worked out at £8 a unit. Be able to sell these for about £22 to £25. Um, so yeah, it's not a major profit margin from £40 to £120. Uh, it's looking like before fees. You know, it's triple my money and I'll take it at the end of the day. If I sell them at £25 anyway, £125 back, £40 spent. Uh, it was a slow day at the boot sale. I really was struggling to find stuff because everyone's already flooded through an hour before. So it's one of those. It's stock that's a little multi-listing and it's easy to list. So over the two boot sales, I spent £70, which is really low. Um, I'd spend that in the first hour normally. Um, and I hope to return £428. And that's like the average price. Uh, I never aim to top end with my projections. About average price. Uh, obviously, some things will sell slower. Some things will sell fast. But yeah, from an off day at the boot sales, an off weekend at the boot sales, I'll take it. It's the first day back. Both times we've got finessed. You know, the first time all the sellers bought everything. Second time I was an hour late, even though I wasn't. I was there in the time that they said. But yeah, it is what it is. There's money to be made and the stock in the shed. So that's the end of the video guys. If you're interested in anything in my business that I use, all the links to my Amazon are down below. All my links to Instagram, etc. down below also, and all my YouTuber friends also down there. Check them all out, they're all cool dudes and all have great advice for you all. If you're new around here, hit that like button, hit subscribe for Booty Picks episode two. Next week, hopefully we'll have the GoPro on, We'll be getting some better bargains. We'll be there earlier. We'll be more tired. We'll have more caffeine in the system. But yeah, I've been John Luke, the reselling white boy. Have a great start to your week. Great sales. Motivate yourself. Get out there. RA, charity shops, everything's back open. Take the right precautions. But most importantly, be yourself. Be happy. Be true. Be you. 2020. Take care.